Hello YouTube, this is a very very quick video on how to solve a system that has fewer equations than variables. And I want to start by saying this, if you ever have fewer equations than you do variables, then I'm sorry to tell you that you're not going to get one and only one solution. So there's no way that this system that I've written here can be consistent independent, it must be consistent dependent. And if one considers this, I mean really what we're saying is we have two linear planes, you know, we have like a plane here, and maybe I have like another plane here that is that is intersecting this first plane, and they intersect along this series of lines, you know, this line, this series of, uh, you know, points. And so we're going to find this series of points uh, by solving this, but still using our elementary row operations, um, just that we're not going to come up with one solution. So let's start with this. Uh, elementary row operations, yes, we say, if we're going to put this into what we call row echelon form, that is that, that stair-step pattern in which the leading coefficient of each row happens to be 1, okay? And so in this case, we're going to have 1x, and then we're going to have like a 1z over here, hopefully. Uh, but the bottom line is, essentially, we want to put it in this form. So starting with this, we have our first row. Uh, first variable is 1. So we're going to make everything below this into nothing. So our first move is going to be this. Let's take negative 4, negative 4 times row 1. We're going to add that to row 2. So what this does is produces our new row equivalent system, row equivalent system has the same solution or solutions. So our first equation is the same. Our second equation now is this. We say, well, negative 4 times this, this x here would be negative 4x plus our positive 4x is nothing. Uh, negative 4 times negative y is positive 4y, and 4y plus nothing actually gives us a 4y here. And we say negative 4 times negative 4z is negative 16z. Negative 16z plus our uh, negative z here is negative 17z. Okay, and then uh, negative 4 times this positive 3 here is negative 12, and negative 12 plus 0 is negative 12. So now we have this system here. You know, it's not entirely necessary that we did this, uh, but it does put this into that row echelon form. So as we do with any you know, system, I would tell you, that say is consistent dependent, okay, uh, we have to develop what we call a parameter. It has infinitely many solutions. What we're going to do is we're going to pick a variable and we're going to allow it to equal some parameter, and we've been using A in my video. So we're going to start with this. We say, well, then our ordered triple, if it exists, what we'll do is we'll let, let, say we'll pick on Z quite a bit. Let Z equal A. And if this is the case, and we say then our parameter here is A, we could have let Y equal A or X equal A, but we're going to let Z equal A. If this is true, however, what we can do now is we can, we can back substitute this into our uh, second equation here to solve for Y. So if we were to put this into our second equation now, we get 4y's minus 17a's equals negative 12. And so now we have this. We have 4y equals 17a's minus 12. And now we get y equals, um, we'd have to divide everything by 4, but we say 17 fourths a minus 3 because 12 divided by 4 is 3. So now we have y, put a box around this, now we have y. And y is equal to 17 fourths a minus 3. So now we're going to take these two values, y and z, we're going to plug them back into our original equation that said this, our original equation, our first equation rather, plus 4z equals 3. We're going to put this in for y, we're going to put this in for ooh, z. Look at this, we get x minus 17 fourths a minus 3 for a y plus 4 times a is 3. And we're going to clean this up a little bit here. So now notice we got a negative in front of a parenthetical quantity. We say x plus 17 fourths a plus 3 plus 4a is 3. So now 4a holes is the same thing as 16a, 16a fourths. Okay, so it would be 16 a fourths. So 16 and 17, that should give us what? 33. So we have x plus 33 fourths of these a's plus 3 is 3. And now if we subtracted 3 from this side, we'd get 0 on the right. And so we get x equals 33 fourths a. 33 fourths a. And so this would be our set of infinitely many solutions here. But again, Really what you're going to do is this. You know, if you ever have fewer equations than you do variables, try to put it in row echelon form if you can. If you can, do it. Uh, but essentially, after doing so, we're going to allow, say, z to be a, and then back solve to get the other two variables. That's all.